Hi, I'm Ali and welcome to the China Repair Studio. So today I thought I would do a little bit of sanding and a little bit more filling on this lovely cockerel. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe, please like and please share and a thumbs up would be great. And let's get going. Right, so here we are with our cockerel. Now in my previous video, I did actually use some mini puts to just fill in some cracks here and in some another place was, here we are, there was a crack here as well. So we filled that in and also there was a little point here which was missing. So we've made a new point up. So I thought I would just start to sand and I'll show you how I tend to sand my pieces. Now the products I use here are the sandpaper, West Hand Dry Sandpaper and I think it's a German brand and if I look on the back it should say Matador and I would highly recommend buying sandpaper in bulk you usually buy them in a packet various different sizes now I tend to, they tend to start on the coarsest grade which would be an 80 and then you tend to work your way up if you like and it gets finer and finer as it goes along and at the very end I do like to use micro mesh which is a very very fine sandpaper on a cloth you can get this, I think, in conservation resources, which I will put on my, I think I put it in the description box down below or on my website. Um, hopefully you can get hold of that in England as well as in America. Um, and I'm sure they ship to other countries as well. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do a little bit of sanding, as I've said. And then after that, I'm just going to, if you can see here, He's missing a few pieces, a few chips, and I'm going to use some Milliput in a terracotta colour just to fill him in so then he'll be ready then for the next video of painting. So what we're going to do first is get our sandpaper. Now I do think a grade 80 would be too harsh on it, so I, for this I would probably start with, let's try this with a which one is this yeah 180 now i just want to show you quickly one other little tip is to always keep them in order of grade otherwise you start mixing matching around and you can't find the next grade down so if you can keep them all together in certain grades going from the 80 to i think this is a an a, a thousand i think there's a thousand here somewhere yeah, 600, 1,000, there we are, 1,000, so that's actually even wrong, put that back there. So if you can keep those in, in line, it makes life a bit easier. So we're going to start with the 180, so I'll just push it that way. So I tend to take little bits off, you don't want to be using a huge big bit and scraping around. Um, the only thing is, obviously, if you take off the number there, which it says, then you have to kind of guess what grade it is. So I, if you can look at the back and try to keep the grade number on the back. So take a little bit. And put it back. Right, so when we start to sand, obviously, you know, you want to start sanding. You don't want to try to sand the milliput or what other if you've used something else that's fine but just try to sand the actual milliput rather than the other pieces around it particularly if it's a coarse grade otherwise you will start to scratch the side of the you know the original you can fold it over as well if you want to get a better Want to get it makes it easier, and then you just want to keep sanding like this and keep going and keep going. Right, 
I'm just going to do this side and I'll do the rest afterwards just so I can sort of just demonstrate it to you basically. So just sand that bit there and then also while I've got the this grade which is the 180 I'm just going to do the point on here as well. Again I'm not touching any of the original at this point I'm just going to lightly sand it At this point you can rub up and down and across just a little bit more there so once you're happy that you've got the majority of the surplus mini put off you can then work on the next level of sandpaper and the next one after the 180 would be, let's have a look, at the 180, we have the 320, let's go for that. So again, 320, take a small piece off. As I say, you then just want to keep working. Also, sorry, if you are working on a piece which is quite fragile, on an end like this just hold it in place um, you don't want to be just doing this and then suddenly it, it pops off you actually just want to hold it and just make sure it's secure and then just keep sanding and then obviously you know we'd do that and then we would also sand here so again I like to fold it over Again, I'm not touching any of the original at the moment. We're not blending it through quite yet. And then once you've done that, for instance, I tend to then go, it would be another layer. Which one, which one would this be? Uh -huh. I'm not sure which one this is. It hasn't actually got a number on, but it's in the next stage lower. So let's go, go for it. As I say, that's why it's always good to keep them in order. And then just keep going. Now, once you start to feel as if you're getting towards the original piece, when it comes to sanding, you don't want to be sanding up and down. Otherwise, once it gets to a point of you're actually touching the original, you will end up with a ridge. So you actually want to get the original and sand away. If you sand from the milliput, for instance, or what other products you're using, if you sand from there towards your piece, you will end up with a ridge. So you almost, you actually need to go the other way. So that way you will end up with a very smooth joint. So apply the pressure from the original to the milliput. And then keep going along. And then again, I'll just, for instance, do it on this. And you just want to keep working your way down the grades. Well, up the grades, actually. <laughs> right, so then I would go for an 800 as a demonstration. So the 800, again, you want to do it so you're actually sanding away from the original. And you would still do again, you would just do another piece again, sand away from the original. Then once you've done that, I would then go to a thousand. So for instance, I would go to a thousand again and I will start rubbing away now when you are rubbing you don't want to be rubbing too much on the original either again I'll just hold the piece and I'll just keep going along again I could just do a bit here I think in the next video I will be um, painting 
so I think he's, he will be ready at that point so I will continue with this so for instance I've yeah, then used the thousand I would then go sorry that was the 800 I would then go for a thousand where are we actually that was the thousand I would then go sorry to a 1200 so the 1200 again I would take a piece now this is one of the finest ones one of the finest um, grades of paper so once you get to the 1200 that is when you've at a point for instance where you can feel it it's almost almost there so this is almost the finishing point and it will almost make it very it will also make it very smooth so you could actually just stop with that and not even go onto the micro mesh if you can't get a hold of any the 1200 should actually do the job so you just want to keep again going down now when you're sanding if you do have something which is in a crook you know in the crevice you could actually take for instance let's have a look you could take a pen or a pencil and you can just wrap it round into a shape like that and say for instance it was here you could actually just then get into those little areas also a cocktail stick for instance again let's see if i can find a cocktail stick here so you have a cocktail stick and again what you would do is you would just wrap it round so if you have something um say you had a join here and you wanted to actually you know sand that obviously it's going to be very tricky to get in there so if you wrap it around a, uh, a cocktail stick you can really get in and then you can really sand away well um, you know so just you know be inventive so once fit, so let's say that's all done i would then go to my final piece and that would be my micro mesh and that's again as I say I would then just again pulling towards me so I'm not actually making a ridge I would actually just keep going and that literally smooths it out now you'll always know when you're finished and it's ready for painting is by doing a finger test so you want to close your eyes and just touch where you have been actually sanding and that way you'll be able to feel if there's any ridges and if there's any ridges you have to go back and sand again but if you can feel it and it doesn't feel like there's any ridges at all it feels completely smooth you know you're ready for painting so that is using the grades the sandpaper now what I'm going to do now is start on his cone right so here we are with the cone and as you can see he is missing a piece here so for this you'll need well i'm using just a small cup of water and i've got my trusted tool nice and flat on the end if you don't have anything like this and i have shown in my previous videos um, you can use maybe a cocktail stick sometimes even your fingers or your hands uh, well your fingers or you could use a palette knife so the product I'm using is um, Milliput Terracotta now I have said again in my previous videos I'm not sponsored in any way by Milliput I use them because they're very useful they actually sand very well and they do come in an array of colours but I'm sure there are other things on the market other products um, if you know of any other products actually which you would recommend please put in the please put it in the description box down below right so once we've got the first it's a 50 50 so just get, I tend to roll it up in a ball so I can tell the size very well sell the size well and then I'm going to get the other part it comes in two parts and I did do this in my previous video but I thought it was quite fun because it was a different colour um, and then you just want to get it into a ball and make sure it's roughly the same size and then you want to combine so 
it only takes a few moments just to combine the two colours together. And always make sure that you wrap these up straight away. And then you want to combine them. And the good thing about having the two different tones is that you can actually tell when it's combined because it's not a marble effect on there. It's a one complete colour. Right, so once that's done, and it feels a bit like blue tack, all nice and sort of squidgy and malleable and sort of easy to use. So then we're going to just take off our scotch tape here. And it does tend to stick and it's been very warm weather, so you know, it's probably sticking a bit more than usual. It's on piece there, and then we just take that off there. Right, so here we have, I'm just going to demonstrate, I've just got a bit of a chip here. So I'm going to take our milliput, as you can see it's not too bad a colour. Again, I could mix it with a black if I wanted it to be darker, but we're going to paint it in it anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. And I just want to just stick it onto there. Now you don't need to glue with milliput. On a larger surface, yes, but because this is very small, we don't need that. And then just put it on there and be ready for sanding. Um, what I like to do on something like this, you can also use where the water comes in, use a little bit of water. So just dab a little bit on with your finger and then you can just smooth it down and then it gets a nice smooth finish. And then that'll make sanding a lot easier as well. There we go. So when it comes to slight cracks like this, I'm not going to worry too much because there's so much glazing on it anyway. But again, with the tool, if you do have you know little cracks you want to fill in, I just take a little piece with the the flat end, and you could roll it in a sausage and place it down. But because it's so fine, I'm just going to do just a little bit, just like that, along the ridge there. Take that bit off there, put it there. And again, just little bits here. Just make sure it's all in there. Let's take some of that off. And what you could do is again, you can take just a little bit of water and just put that in there. Just have to take that off. That will just make sure it goes in nicely. And then let's go across the other side. Now you can see we also have here. A few more knocks and breaks so I'm just going to fill those in as well and there's a few more bigger chips here actually so I just that's whoops just that and you want to make it quite flat and I'll just add a couple more little bits here I say, if you're having a material such as pottery, um, which is very dry, and this tends to break extremely easily. All right, a little bit more on there. And then again, just a little bit of water on the finger, you know, if you want to just smooth it. Not necessary, but... Um, makes it a bit easier when it comes to sanding and just get that down so it's so you haven't got so many ridges right and then as you can see we've got some sort of slightly deeper cracks in here so again just with our little tool just going to take a bit off like that and just oh, yeah fill them in and then we'll take another little piece fill them in 
and another piece. Now you could actually, you don't have to use water, and I, and I will actually demonstrate by not using water on this side, on the cracks along there. So again, you can just leave him there. Now this is going to take around 12 hours to cure to really harden, but 24 hours is even better. And then I can just finish off sanding, ready for painting. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Again, if you haven't subscribed before, please subscribe, please like and please share. And I will see you in the next one. Okay, bye.